In an earlier video, we looked at some of the operations that we can perform on vectors. We looked at how to add and subtract vectors, and we also looked at how to multiply vectors by a scalar. Now in this video, we're going to look at how we multiply two vectors together, and there's a couple of different ways we can do this. We can multiply two vectors together and get a vector solution, or we can multiply two vectors together and get a scalar solution. And it's that second alternative that we're going to look at here, multiplying two vectors together in order to get a scalar solution. And the method that we use is called finding the dot product. And I've displayed the notation there. If we want to find the dot product of two vectors, then we have vector a dot vector b. And there's actually a couple of different ways that we can do this. In the middle of our equation there, we have the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b cos theta. And we can reference that to the diagram directly below because we have the two vectors a and b, and what we have is a certain amount of overlap of those two vectors here. And that overlap will be cos of the angle because it's the adjacent from the angle. So in actual fact, what we're doing here is we're multiplying the magnitude of vector a, or the length of vector a, by vector b cos theta because vector b cos theta is this line here, the overlap between vectors a and b. So times vector b cos theta. If our vector a ran in the x direction, and our vector b had components in both the x and y direction, then our dot product would be the vector a times the x component of vector b, and that would return a scalar solution. Another way that we can work out the dot product is using the third part of that equation where we've multiplied the x components of each of those vectors together and we've added the product of the y components and then we've added the product of the z components. And we do that for a similar reason as we just discussed. The x components here will overlap but an x component will never overlap with a y component. They're mutually perpendicular. And the same can be said for an x component and a z component. And again, the same can be said for a y component and a z component. The x components only overlap with the x components, the y components with the y components, and the z components with the z components. Now where this all comes in useful is when we want to calculate the angle between two vectors, this angle theta here. And we're going to look at the process of how we would do that for two vectors. So here we have two vectors, vector a and vector b, and we want to find the angle between those two vectors. And we're going to be using the second two terms in the equation, the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b cos theta, and ax bx plus ay by plus az bz. But the first thing we need to do is we need to get cos theta on its own. And the way that we get cos theta on its own is by dividing by the magnitude of a, magnitude of b. So let's just rewrite this. We'll get cos theta. Recall that we're trying to find theta. Equals ax bx plus ay by plus az bz. All divided by the magnitude of vector a times the magnitude of vector b. Now the final step then to get theta on its own is to do cos to the minus one of each side. Recall that cos to the minus 1 is the inverse of cos. And we get cos to the minus 1 of ax bx plus ay by plus az bz. And again, that's all divided by the magnitude of vector a times the magnitude of vector b. So now we need two vectors, or we need some information about our two vectors. And in this case, we're going to say that vector A has the following column vector, 4, 2, minus 3. And we're going to say that vector B has the column vector 3, minus 4, 5. So as we look at our equation here, we can see that on the top, we have ax times bx. Well, the x component of a is 4, and the x component of b is 3. 
Next we have a, y, b, y, and again we can see the y component of a is 2, and the y component of b is minus 4, and the same for z. The z component of vector a is minus 3, and the z component of vector b is 5. So we can resolve the top of that fraction. We can also determine the magnitude of these two vectors. We've done this previously using the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared plus the z component squared. So let's calculate the magnitude of our two vectors now. So we have the magnitude of vector a is the square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared plus minus 3 squared. Therefore, the magnitude of vector a is 5.385 to 3 decimal places. Let's repeat for vector b. The magnitude of vector b is the square root of 3 squared plus minus 4 squared plus 5 squared. And running that through the calculator gives us the magnitude of vector b equal to 7.071. So we can input all of that into our final formula because we have theta equals cos to the minus 1 of open brackets ax bx 4 times 3 plus ay by 2 times minus 4 plus az bz minus 3 times 5. And on the bottom of the fraction we have the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. Well the magnitude of a is 5.385 and the magnitude of b is 7.071. So we have theta equals cos to the minus 1 now I'm going to resolve this bracket. We have 4 times 3 plus 2 times minus 4 plus minus 3 times 5. Now recall that a plus times a minus is a minus. But when we resolve the top line of that fraction, we get minus 11. And on the bottom of the fraction, I have 5.385 times 7.071 which is 38.077, accurate to three decimal places. So I'm going to run that through my calculator, cos to the minus 1 of minus 11 over 38.077, but I must make sure that my calculator is in degrees mode. And the reason for that is I want to know the angle between these two vectors in degrees. So cos to the minus 1 of minus 11 over 38.077, is 106.8 degrees, accurate to one decimal place. Therefore, the angle between our vectors A and B is 106.8 degrees.